So today I'm wearing red in honour of our story of the week, which is again another version of the little red hen. Have a look, see if you can spot any differences today. Have a think which one you preferred, yesterday's story or today's one. See if you can tell someone why. Have a great day and enjoy it. See you soon. Bye. <laughs> time lived a little red hen lived in a house on a hill with a fine white cockerel and a small dark mouse. The house had shiny red doors and shutters. Across the valley on another hill lived a family of bad-tempered foxes. The door of their house had been slammed so many times it was hanging off of its hinges and two of the windows had been broken. One morning, the little bad-tempered foxes said to their bad-tempered father, It's not fair! We're so hungry! We haven't eaten for days! All right, all right, shouted the bad-tempered father fox. But I'm too tired to go far for food. We could eat the little red hen across the valley, suggested one of the foxes. And the fine white cockerel, said another. And the small dark mouse for a snack, joined in another little fox. I'll go and fetch my sack, said the bad-tempered father, and he almost smiled. The same morning, the cockerel, the mat and the mouse came into the kitchen as the little red hen was making breakfast. Who will get some sticks to light the fire, she asked. Oh, not me, answered the cockerel. Not me, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen, and she did. from the stream asked the little red hen not me answered the cockerel not me said the mouse then I'll do it myself said the little red hen and she did the little red hen put the kettle on to boil and then turned to the, turned to the cockerel and the mouse who will get the breakfast ready she asked not me answered the cockerel not me said the mouse then I will do it myself said the little red hen and she did. All the way through bre breakfast, the cockerel and the mouse grumbled and argued. They spilt the milk jug and put crumbs all over the floor. What a mess, said the little red hen. Who will tidy everything up? Not me, answered the cockerel. Not me, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. And she did. When she had finished, she felt like sitting down but she still had chores to do. Who will help me make the bed, she asked. Not me, answered the cockerel. Not me, said the mouse. Then I'll do it myself, said the little red hen. And she went upstairs at once. After breakfast, the cockerel and the mouse were so tired they fell asleep. All of a sudden, there was a knock at the door. Are you going to answer that? asked the mouse. Not me. I'm too tired, said the cockerel. Why don't you? Well, it might be a parcel of cheese for me, thought the mouse. So he did. The minute he opened the door, the bad-tempered fox leapt into the house. Got you, he shouted as he popped the mouse into his sack. Got you, he shouted as he popped the cockerel into his sack. The little red hen came running downstairs to see what was the matter. Got you, the fox shouted as he popped her into his sack and he tied it up. Oh, I wish I hadn't been so lazy, wailed the cockerel. Oh, I wish I hadn't been so grumpy, wailed the mouse. Don't worry, said the little red hen. Everything will be fine. I've got my sewing kit and a very good idea. The fox staggered all the way down the valley, carrying the heavy sack. He was very hot and tired, so before he climbed up the hill to his house, he thought he would have a rest by the stream. He hadn't been sitting for long before he fell fast asleep. As soon as the little red hen heard him snoring, she fetched out her scissors and she snipped a mouse-sized hole in the sack. Quickly, she whispered, go and fetch a stone as big as yourself and hurry. The mouse was soon back. Push the stone into the sack, whispered the little red hen. Then she cut a hole in the sack as big as the cockerel. Go and find a stone as big as yourself, she said. 
Hurry! As soon as the corporal returned, she told him to push the stone into the bag also. Then she climbed out of the sack, put in a stone as big as herself, and quickly sewed up the hole. Then all three of them ran as fast as they could up the hill to their house, shut all of the windows, and locked the door. The bad-tempered fox, meanwhile, remained fast asleep until the sun began to go down. He grumbled. It's cold and I have to carry this heavy sack all the way home. It's not fair. He started to cross the, str the stream, but the sa sack of stones was so heavy that he was pulled right under the water. He could have let go and floated back to the top, but he was so greedy and bad-tempered at the thought of letting go of his supper that he held on tight and was never seen again. The fine white cockerel and the small dark mouse made the little red hen sit and rest in the most comfortable chair while they lit the fire, filled the kettle, made the breakfast and did all of the other chores around the home. And they never grumbled again. Not once.